Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. This is the diaspora transition episode where we interview people who move back from the diaspora and currently living here. People are coming for business visit. We want to hear their story. We want to know their challenges, their difficulties. And on this episode, we have here someone very, very special. She's a CEO. She's an artist. And uh, she goes by the name Marissa. And uh, she's a CEO of D. Liela. Shay, I hope I hope I didn't just <laughs> I did that messed that up. That's not how they say it, isn't it? Okay, it? it's okay. Okay, so welcome on the show. Thank you. How do you pronounce the the, the, the okay, name? Okay, yes. So um the name of my company mm -hmm. is actually my middle name. Okay. Oh wow. And it's it's pronounced D Lee mm -hmm. A. D Lee A Lachey. Lachey. Yeah. Guys, I'm sorry. D Lee A Lachey, okay? So yes, this episode is brought to you by Terra Nova. Home for the elderly and uh, this space is created by a lady from the diaspora or people from the diaspora who understand the needs of the diaspora and moving back from the US and other uh, places around uh, the globe to Ghana and currently living here most people came back uh, retirement for their retirement and um, sometimes you know not having a family member here is sometimes challenging um, if you are sick or the elderly at your home is sick and you have to go to work you can't just leave them alone so you need to you know find places like Terra Nova homes where you can you know um you know sign up you know they have nurses who are certified also in, in cpr training very friendly who can take care of of um the elderly with passion not just anyone just wanting to just do it for the money but people who are you know dedicated with a craft and everything and they are located in tema come 20 very close to medical facilities so you don't have anything to worry, you know, very beautiful place. And yeah, check them out. Their name would be on the screen. Their telephone numbers will also be on the screen and also in the description, as well as their GPS or their landmark. So it will be very easy to look at them. So the name is Terra Nova Home for the Elderly. Don't forget. Hi, everybody. My name is Marissa and I'm the owner of Delia Lachey. Mm -hmm. Delia Lachey is a wearable art brand producing jewelry for the purpose of empowering those through wearable art. Their life journey, mm -hmm. um, I don't repeat a lot, mm -hmm. but when I do, it's very, it's like limited edition. Edition, okay, yeah. okay. Wow, wow. So, why Ghana? Why Ghana? Yes. Ghana was the first place I came to mm -hmm. um, in Africa. Like, Ghana was the first place I visited, um, and it was Ghana. Wow. Africa. Wow. West Africa. Wow. So how did it come about, though? Okay, so um, Ghana was the first African country I ever visited. Wow. Yes. It was. Uh, the first time I came was in 2019, and I came over with my now fiancé. So back then, we were doing work with a nonprofit. He had a nonprofit. Um, I brought my brand over. I also worked with a, a non for profit back in the US. Mm -hmm. And we came and we collaborated mm -hmm. where we did an exchange where I taught jewelry design to um, the performing arts school I work with. Okay. And then he also was doing some charity work. We mm -hmm. came together. We stayed for about a month. Wow. And we spent a lot of time with wow. kids wow. in different in different schools. That's very interesting. So when was the first time you came? 2019? 2019. Okay, and you've been back and forth? Yes. Okay, for how, how long now? Okay, so it's So you fully visits. moved? Okay. Yeah, okay. so 2019, that mm -hmm. was the first time. Mm -hmm. That was about a month. Mm -hmm. And then the second time, I believe, was 2020. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you moved back to Ghana fully? The third time was wow now tell me how was it like the first time you stepped foot mm -hmm. on the continent when the airplane gate just opened like that and you felt the heat and the greetings the heat. <laughs> okay which month do you come to ghana what is it what month what month yeah i think it was june june yes so the heat was there a little bit how did you feel if you remember Okay. But my head, when I got into the cab, mm -hmm. or I don't know, I forgot who picked us up, but mm -hmm. my head was just like, oh my God. Wow. Like, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, you came with your newly engaged fiance.
Okay, how did he convince you to listen? Let's go to Africa, if you don't mind. You know what? It didn't take a whole lot of convincing. Really? After two visits here, mm -hmm. um, we really enjoyed our time. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit of a nomad, so I'm okay. used to kind of traveling. Traveling. Okay. Wow. Ghana was different though. It was mm -hmm. different from any other country I ever traveled to. Whoa, really? It's the first African country I had ever been to. So what, what is the difference? Difference. You know, I feel as though, okay, I spent some time in the UK, I mm -hmm. spent some time in Italy. Mm -hmm. They're all kind of similar, I'm not going to lie. It's mm -hmm. different, but it's still Europe. similar culture. Yeah. So coming here, mm -hmm. it was just so much vibrancy. It yeah. was just so much color. Mm -hmm. I just felt, you know, it was mm -hmm. just peaceful as wow. well. Wow, that's There's beautiful. so much going on. The energy wow. was definitely good. So what is true? In your family, right, you are the first person who ever stepped foot on the continent of Africa, right? No. No? no? no. Interestingly enough, my grandmother, my late grandmother, okay. um, came to Ghana actually 14 years prior oh. to visit. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so you are continuing her legacy. <laughs> yes. yes. Wow, she so. Came. She had a very good friend in Cape Coast and she wow. stayed with her. Wow. And so when I came, she embraced me with love. Wow, arms. that's beautiful. Yeah, so we spent time in Rest in peace to grandma. Yes. But you came again. Your grandma also came after you, you moved back, right? No, she, she passed away at oh, that time. Oh, but who came recently? Recently, my other grandma. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Because I remember, yeah. <laughs> yeah. From, from which side? My father's side. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because um, before we get to that, mm -hmm. okay, I wanted to ask you the first time you told him, listen, I'm going to Africa. Right. Okay. I know your grandma from your mother's side did came here, but you told them, listen, I want to go to Africa, I want to go to Ghana. How did they react when you told them that? Well, because it's not my first time traveling, traveling out of the country, okay. I don't think it was as big of a shock, mm -hmm. but, you know, it was always, it's always a big deal. Okay. It is. Okay. Inviting me in Africa, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know a lot. Okay. We don't know a lot about it's true. Africa. Very true. true. Very so true. The unknown is scary. Okay. It helped a lot that okay. you know I wasn't gonna be alone though mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I was gonna be with my fiance. Fiance. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations on your new engagement. Thank you. But um, I want to ask your your grandma came yeah. together with your dad mm -hmm. just about two months ago to and to and, and, and your sister. mom and sister to to experience you getting uh, engaged. One of the reasons, and they also toured, right, Ghana? They traveled yeah, around they, Ghana? Yeah, their purpose was just to come to Ghana. Okay. Um, I was determined to get them over. Okay. And little did I know it turned into an engagement. But how, how, what did it take to convince them to come there? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was a lot of back and forth conversation. Mm -hmm. I think my grandma, like, backed out a couple of times. Wow. Like you know, honey, I'm sick. I can't go. Oh, you know? my god, my grandmother is in good health. Okay, it okay. was just. I think it was that fear, fear of just traveling yeah. and mm -hmm. the unknown. Mm -hmm. But wow, she got here. Mm -hmm. All the energy she had, and my family, they just really loved it, and it, it felt good to see Ghana through their eyes. Wow, like them experience it. Mm -hmm. Like see. See me, see them, like experiencing. Wow, that. I like that. So you've been here for one year. Mm -hmm. You've experienced. You were telling me you were taking some trotro at one point, <laughs> right? Yeah. You, you've been through the ups and downs. What have been some minor challenges you faced since you've moved back to Ghana? Hmm. Major challenges. Mm -hmm. Maybe communication. Communication. Efficiency. Really? Efficiency. Yeah. Explain that. What do you mean by communication? Okay, so communication. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes maybe misunderstanding someone. Okay. You know, every culture has a different way of communicating, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm used to like very blunt, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. etiquette mm -hmm. of just I'm gonna do this, okay. and this is that's that's it. Mm -hmm. you know? I believe it's very it's polite. I love God. It's polite. It's very so when someone doesn't want to do something, mm -hmm. they may not say it. Yeah. That's like my own challenge here. <laughs> they may not say it, they may agree, and mm -hmm. they won't do it. Wow. So that has been the only time you'd say, you know, it's been major? 
There's they do so in the water cut. Yeah, and... there's been times when the lights cut off. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, the lights just cut off. Mm -hmm. And it's frequent, you mm -hmm. know, depending on the yeah. season, I think. Yeah. But in the beginning, yes, I was like, okay, the lights are off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going <laughs> to do that. But now I've learned to kind of adapt to it okay. and take that time okay. to look okay. inward and kind of isolate. I see. Yeah. What do you do differently that made you adapt, though? Stop trying to control everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. Wow. Yeah. So, you learn that you really mm -hmm. can't control anything. Mm -hmm. You really can't. Wow, that's very interesting. I'm enjoying the conversation so far. If you're watching and you are enjoying it too, please, I want you to like the video and subscribe. YouTube says 80% of you guys watching haven't subscribed. If you love the episode, why don't you subscribe? Right? Now, let's just, let's just get right into it. But with all these challenges, right, would you say you've ever got into a point where you were like, I'm tired, man. Ghana is frustrating me love enough. I'm packing my bags. I'm leaving. You know, mm -hmm. I think I've gotten to that point where I knew I needed a break. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I knew that I needed a break. Mm -hmm. I missed my family. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and just needed to go back for about a month mm -hmm. with, you know, new eyes and okay. come back. Okay. Refresh. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's dive into what you do here. The mm -hmm. arts. Okay. Right. The beauty. The the the. You know, challenges of being an artist here on the continent. Mm -hmm. Wow. Tell me about it. How did it start here? Mm -hmm. And then challenges you've been through trying to bring out your arts. And then, yeah, ongoing challenges. Well, as far as inspiration, mm -hmm. like, that's not a challenge. Because okay. it's, you know, it's so many things here mm -hmm. to be inspired by. Okay. Especially when it's something you're not used to seeing, so... That, that's not an issue. I think that Ghana pushed me as an artist to look outside of my resources and use what is around me for art, for artistry. Use the resources that are around me. Mm -hmm. um, use the environment. Mm -hmm. Spend time connecting in different places. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how is it working with Ghanaians? Like... You know what? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a beautiful thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because there are some similarities mm -hmm. with we learn from each other. Um, I like to say that <laughs> Americans have a tendency to be very like, mm -hmm. you know, um, speedy with certain things or very we'll structured. Get it yeah. Fast, yeah, and then Ghanaians are more patient. Mm -hmm. So I think it balances each other out. Okay. You know, okay. with that. But Let's talk about your passion. Why is jewelry a passion for you? What, what's inspired you to, to do jewelry? So jewelry to me is a conversation piece. Okay. Jewelry is, you know, a voice. What you wear, mm -hmm. you know, is, is a representation of yourself. So I've always looked at jewelry as, yeah, a representation of yourself. It holds a voice. Mm -hmm. It has a personality. Okay. You know, you can be having um, a little bit of a down day, but when you put on a certain type mm -hmm. or a certain piece of jewelry, mm -hmm. it may brighten your day. Mm -hmm. Like this last collection was very bold colors, mm -hmm. very vibrant energy. Mm -hmm. And that has that has the power to change your whole day. Yeah. I love bright colors. Yeah. Yeah. I love... Yeah. I can know, see that. Yeah. You're wearing so much in your dress right now. <laughs> And it's beautiful. Is it part of your product? Yes. Wow. Yes, if people are watching right now, they are seeing it on the screen right now. Okay. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Okay. They want it for themselves. They want to be wearing you when they are coming to Africa for the first time. Can you imagine? And they are in a flight and they are wearing it. They want to buy it. Mm -hmm. How did they go about it? Okay. So you can follow me on mm -hmm. Instagram mm -hmm. under Delia Lachey. Mm -hmm. That same name on Facebook, Delia Lachey. Also my website. DeLiaLachey.com and wow. I'm assuming we'll have the link yes the, the link will be in the description Absolutely. so they can just click it and go straight to the page and you do deliveries internationally right? I do right mm -hmm. Charlie all their stuff it's very beautiful mm -hmm. if I was a girl I would buy some yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll buy from my mom <laughs> <laughs> wow so I, I love it you know each and every um, art that you, you bring out it's very unique mm -hmm. and as you said unless it's a limited edition mm -hmm. you would never do a duplicate and I think it takes a lot of creativity 
to be able to be producing this amount of jewelry without having to repeat it. Yeah. Even big brands like Gucci repeat a lot of arts mm -hmm. and it's not limited editions yeah. most of the time. But you are doing very different each and every one of them. This is the only thing you have, right? There's nothing like it. Yeah, um, I have different versions. Versions. This is the only color I have. This will be a limited edition, so it'll probably be only maybe five max. Wow. Of these. And I'm encouraging my viewers to please support black owned businesses. Okay. She is an African American. She came to the continent and she's creating made in Ghana, everything is yes. made here. And she's creating amazing uh, wearable um, arts. And all you need to do is to support. Go into the link in the uh, description, click it, go order it. And then within five days, one week max, you have it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shipping doesn't take so much time. Actually, it, it doesn't, surprisingly. Yeah. I thought it would take long. Yeah. But... So, yeah. Wow. Let's talk. Do you think is, is, are you comfortable living here in Ghana, would you say? You know, I don't think you can ever be fully comfortable. Mm, really? What do you mean by that? And that's okay. That's okay. I don't think you can ever be fully comfortable because if you're too comfortable, you're not being challenged. Okay. And for me, I like to be challenged. Um, mm -hmm. I think you can be comfortable to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm, I'm learning every day. Every mm -hmm. day. I get a little bit more comfortable than I did yesterday, if that makes sense. Wow. Chi is the native <laughs> language of Ghana. Yes. Have you learned some tree? I've learned a little tree. <laughs> I've learned a little tree. Really? It's the same. Aye. Aye. So if I say a comedy, what does it mean? Are you hungry? Okay. Okay. I'm hungry. Okay. Wow, I'm that's hungry. good. Yeah. That's good. Wow. You you're embracing Ghana. Yeah. Wow. So let's talk about food. You've tried some Ghanaian food since I you have. Back? I have. Yes. Which one have you tried so far? I've tried. Let's see. Well, I've tried fufu, mm -hmm. I've tried red red, I've tried palm nut soup, mm -hmm. I've tried, well, palm nut soup with rice bowl. But, okay, okay. Amutu and a benkwine. That's ben how it's called. Rice bowl and palm nut soup, right? Okay. Try and say amutu. Oh, amutu. <laughs> a benkwine. A benkwine. That's good. Okay, I'm Wow, trying. so which one is your favorite so far though? Red red. Red red. I love red. Wow. Red. Wow. It's have you tried banko and okra? I have. Wow. I have. And you know okra is very similar to food at home actually. Food really? In the US. US? Yes. That's interesting. Yes. What is it called in the US? Okra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I okra. thought there would be something else. Also, what would be like gumbo. There's mm. okra and gumbo mm. in, you know, Louisiana style. Wow. Like we grew up eating. Wow. Well, and I like I want I want to give you a compliment. I like your fashion style. Thank you. Right, you, and you moved back to Ghana. You were telling me behind cameras about how Ghana fashion, mm -hmm. how people. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. And you are an artist. But before we get into that, I saw you painting. But before you address that, right? Let's talk about Ghanaian culture and, you know, how do you see Ghanaian culture? Okay. The okay. artist part of it and everything. When I first got to Ghana, and I saw. I mean, something as simple as the buildings, mm -hmm. something as simple as where you would shop. Right. And everything is so bright. You have bright colored yellow mm -hmm. and lime green. And, you know, you really put emphasis on mm -hmm. the color and the energy of the place. Wow. And I really embrace that. Wow. Like, that's a beautiful thing. Wow. Um, not to mention just the culture in general, just the dancing mm -hmm. just everything's mm -hmm. a dance everything wow. is joy. i see you you are you know? more, yeah <laughs> i like the passion and seeing you painting seeing that video on the screen right now as you can see you look very like you love what you're doing mm -hmm. right did painting or art start in ghana or how did it start it for you okay so painting started when i was young young yeah. okay what age I want to say 12. 12? I took my first oil painting classes at 12. Wow. My, my wow. parents saw that I really enjoy art. Mm -hmm. I was very quiet and it's what I enjoyed. So they put me in painting classes and wow. I just never stopped. Wow. But I just recently started to put my art out there. Yeah, and very beautiful. Thank you. And very beautiful. <laughs> so are you selling this art piece that I can, really, it's mm -hmm. on sale. If someone is watching right now and they want to buy it, they can buy it. 
Sure, they can really? take a look at the portfolio that I have right now. Okay, how can I find it? So my portfolio is on Instagram. Okay. It's under Marissa Kendrick underscore art. Okay. Well, I see you doing so many amazing things, the jewelries, the wearable arts and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's thriving. It's everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. And you're doing this not in America, but in Ghana, and you're mm -hmm. thriving. But most Ghanaians often think it's not possible to make it here. Mm -hmm. They tend to look outside, right? But if you are saying, no, I love it here, it's possible to make it here. But mm -hmm. I want to put it to you again. Do you think, for real, that it's really possible to succeed doing something like this on the continent? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I do think it is a struggle with, you know, maybe maybe resources. Mm -hmm. It might be, you know, the perspective of art, mm -hmm. looking in a way to make money versus mm -hmm. looking in, in a way where it's passionate and enjoying it. Okay. That could be a hard balance. I see. I won't lie on that. I see. But. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, most Africans are watching right now. Mm -hmm. And all they hear is Diaspora is coming back home and it's amazing. It's like sunshine and rainbows mm. and it's beautiful. The sun is, and they're like, listen, you guys don't know how we are suffering here. Mm -hmm. They tend to look outside. But all I hear is there's money here and people are making millions. Mm -hmm. Foreigners are making all this money and we Ghanaians living on the continent. I don't see all this. What would be, it's not an advice, but your opinion on things that can be done differently for us to really kind of understand the opportunities here to be able to capitalize it. This is a message to mm -hmm. the fellow African youth watching. What would that be? I would say perspective. Perspective. Like the perspective, you have to change your perspective. Mm -hmm. You have to not look outward, but inside. You have to look inside. Mm. Like what is your personal gift? Um, and not be, not be it so money driven, okay. Okay. but longevity. Longevity. You know, what, what is going to make money long term? Mm. There's quite a bit of short term, you know, yeah. thinking. Yeah. And I think that's the only thing that I would change is like the mindset. The mindset. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The mindset is everything. You have to give yourself more credit because there's so much creativity here. Wow. There's so many talented people here, mm -hmm. you know. Actually, I think coming together and creating resources together, okay. you know, brainstorming wow. on that more. <laughs> we, we are actually filming at Bureau, and it's a co-working space, private uh, working space that you can, you know, come here, work, you moved back from the diaspora, mm -hmm. and you are living here. It's like, I want speed, high, fi high Wi-Fi. I don't want no uh, electricity going down. I want something stable. If you want... Just go into the link in the description. There's GPS address to this place, and you can also book it. And then you can come here and work like you never left the USA. It's beautiful, you it know. Is. So yeah, we are almost done. But I want to ask you: Has it all been worth it for you since you moved back? Yes. Yes. No absolutely. regrets. I don't have any. I don't live by regrets. Okay. I don't live okay. by regrets. Send a message. Final message <laughs> to the people watching. A final message. Okay, so my message to anyone watching mm -hmm. is just to be yourself. Okay. Whether you are in what, no matter what country you are, be yourself. If you're someone moving from here to the U.S., or Canada, or whatever, or back to Ghana, be yourself. Wow. Stay but, true to you. Stay true to yourself. Yes. So that's what we are ending the episode with. Thank you so much for talking to me. It's Thank been a wonderful conversation. And uh, I love your art and thank things you're you. doing here. And thank you for contributing to the, you know, motherland. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so what I want to say to you guys is I want you guys to go and support her. This is black owned business and she's doing great. And the art is amazing. The earrings stands out. I've seen Gucci and I've seen other whatever, <laughs> but they don't have this. It has an artistic to it. Like you really took your time. And I don't know how, you must be a genius to be able to create this. Oh, trust me. Oh, and thank you. if they are watching, I would like to buy some for my mom as a gift. And gotcha. uh, you should do the same. Imagine you coming to Africa for the first time and you already have something made in Ghana to support a black owned business. Come on. So this, been, this has been a wonderful episode. And this is the Diaspora Transition episode. If you enjoyed, please, I want you to like, share, and subscribe. YouTube said 80% of you guys watching didn't subscribe, which... 
I don't understand. You love it? Why not subscribe, right? So thank you so much for watching. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Peace out.